So I have this little example I made. I'm gonna go ahead and run it now. It is a Baldur's Gate light type of uh, deal. So it's just gonna be the movement and then how you can do an action, but I'll uh, make this available for free. You can download it. Uh, so you have moving here. We can then move over here if we want. And then once he finishes getting to where he's going, we can click on this red guy over here and move him. And you can see the active character that we have is now player two instead of player one. We can then click on our blue guy and bring him a little closer. Uh, I'm going to put the camera in a little bit further and we can hit this throw button, which will bring him into the throwing state. And he will now look at our mouse wherever it is. So then we can uh, click again and he will go into the launch projectile state and then back into idle. So now if we click, he will again move. And then we can also click on this guy again and move him around. So that's basically how it works in Baldur's Gate. Uh, this is very simplified, but um, it's the start of how you would do that. So what we have are just a few uh, nodes, really. Player 2 is just a copy of Player 1. Uh, simple Cam is just that, a simple camera for moving around and selecting objects. We have this navigation region 3D, which all that does is just allow us to pathfind. Uh, once we click a spot on the ground, we use Godot's functions to uh, make a path to wherever we clicked on and then guide our player down that path. And we will see how we do that. So first thing, there's also one thing we're not seeing here. If we go to, let's go to scripts. Uh, we have a auto loading script called game manager so on our active character instance when we select a character we're actually uh, updating this here and saving it in this script that's available to everyone here so that way we can access it anywhere um, in the game because we need to be able to access whatever character uh, we have selected anywhere in our game so let's take a look at uh, simple camera first so if we go to our 3D scene and we select our simple camera, we can see that we do have some UI here and that basically just displays some stuff for us. Uh, we'll get into that later. But the camera itself is just a simple camera 3D. We can look at the script now. And uh, first thing we do is send ourselves to the game manager. That way we have a get camera function in the game manager script and we can get our camera from other scripts. We're gonna need that. This allows our camera movement. Um, we'll just take a look right here. All this does is just increase our position or decrease it based on um, which way we're going. It's just W, A, S, D, Q, and E to move up and down vertically and then rotate R and F. So pretty standard there. We have uh, allow clicking. This is a function that allows us to click on things when we're in the camera state. So when we're actually here in our level, this is the function that allows us to click on the characters or the ground. And all that does is it sends a raycast. So let's take a look at this function. Uh, we're getting a variable called ray hit. This just checks that whenever something is clicked, we will then uh, create this variable called ray hit. And that is going to return, uh, going to be the return value of this function. And if we find that function down here, uh, this looks complicated, but all it does is create a raycast and then project that raycast from the origin of the camera that we are uh, to the uh, mouse. So whatever we're clicking on in the game world. So it's just going to shoot a raycast and then get whatever is uh, behind that raycast. And that is what we return. And if we return anything at all, it'll be a, well, we return a dictionary every time. But if we hit anything, it'll be an empty dictionary. So if it's not empty, we can move on. Uh, we, per, we are going to uh, print the name here. And then uh, Collider is, since it's a dictionary, we can access um, its properties by using the dot operator. We say dot Collider, and that will be the actual character body 3D. So if we go to our player, we put him in the uh, player group immediately on our on ready function. So uh, we check that it is the player, that we're in the player group, 
And if that is the case, that is when we actually update our active character instance in our game manager. So we go to our game manager and say, uh, whatever our collider is right now, that is our active character instance. And then this just updates the um, camera UI. So, and then uh, down here, if we click the ground, so if our collider is in the ground group and we already have an active character instance, um, then we are going to take our active character instance and call the move to function on that instance. And the ray hit will actually give us the position of where we clicked our mouse. So this is the position of wherever we clicked um, on the screen. So um, that is what this does. It allows clicking. So this will either uh, give us a player character to act upon or tell the player character to move. And if we look at our move to function on our player script, that is down here. And that just sets our navigation target um, using our uh, navigation agent 3D. <clears throat> So continuing down, let me open that back up. So we can close this guy up. Uh, we already looked at him, we'll close that up. We have allow throw clicking. And this is basically the same thing, except this is going to be activated once we're in the throw state on our camera, because we have cameras here. Uh, I mean, we have states here. so. When we're just basically walking around, uh, we're in the normal state, and then as soon as I hit the throw button, so if we're here, I click on the guy, and then I have this throw button down here. If I click on that, our camera is now in the throw state, and our guy is in the throw state as well. So we throw, we're in the, uh, we launched it, we're back to idle, and you can see over here, our simple cam has switched back to the normal state. Uh, that's necessary because we're going to have to change the logic on you know whatever we're clicking on because if we're you know if we're throwing and we click we don't want to move to that spot we want to uh, throw something at it so uh, that was why if I had this in here um, allow clicking uh, allow just regular clicking it would break the whole thing so we have to have that separate logic there which means separate states which means a state machine right here and then of course up here we just allow camera movement the whole time in the process function. Hmm, sorry. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much our simple camera script. Let's take a look now at our player. So our player is a, a pretty standard player. We have a state machine on this guy as well. We have a navigation agent 3D. So we'll actually go there and look at it in the 3D. Uh, it's just a fun little guy. His arm's a little fucked up right now. I'm not sure what's wrong with him. Um, but he has a navigation agent 3D. Uh, we also have an animation player, which just has a few fun animations for us. And uh, just a collision shape, uh, character body 3D. And then these are just meshes. Um, you don't really need these at all. So if we look here and listen, uh, you'll know that appearing offline does not change. Uh, <clears throat> so we can go update state shower. Um, that is just our uh, text. Uh, that's just our uh, label 3D. So that just displays what state we're in. So we have our level here. Uh, we're in the idle. We'll click on and we're moving. That's all that does is update that whenever we change states. So we have our move to, which we saw sets our navigation target position and then sets our next state to moving, which will move us into the moving state um, down here. And that moves the, uh, that'll put us in the move continuously function. All right, so move continuously, this function looks a little complicated, but really it's not that bad. We have the target position. And so when we set our main target position when we clicked and we're still moving to the point that we clicked on with our player. Uh, what Godot does is set up a bunch of uh, points that lead in a path to wherever we clicked. 
So when we call this nav.getNextPathPosition, we're basically getting the next breadcrumb on our trail. We then get the direction to that position, um, and that is from our position wherever we are. So that will basically give us the direction that we want to move in to go where we want to go. Because if we remember, the navigation just gives us where we're supposed to go. It doesn't actually move us at all. So we have to apply that somehow by giving ourselves a direction and then by setting our velocity to that direction and moving with the move and collide function. That is how character body 3Ds work. This look at right here just uh, makes us look at the um, uh, whatever breadcrumb we're moving towards so that we actually look like we're walking in the right direction and our character is not facing the wrong direction. We don't need this for it to work, but it makes it look a lot better. So uh, now that we understand what we're doing here, we multiply by speed and then delta just to slow it down. And that's why we had to bring in delta here. Um, we have this if nav.distance to target is uh, is it less than one then next state equals idle so basically if we get really close to it we could um, we'd move to an idle state because we don't want to you know keep moving past where we want to go so that's really all there is to it is uh, we're just feeding those breadcrumbs into ourselves and moving uh, based on that so uh, now the only thing we have left to really discuss is the throw and so how the throw works is, uh, is this. So let's just recap. We're in the level, we run it, we click on our character, we then press the throw button. We're now in the throwing state and the character revolves around uh, himself looking at our mouse. We then click a button and it launches the projectile and then we're back to the idle state. So. Um, we have the simple camera and then we have the throw button right here on our UI. So when we click that button, we can see the function that is uh, enacted. And what that does is say game manager dot active character instance start throw. So once again, we're using the active character instance to call a function on because it's uh, a very easy way to do it. So then we can look at our player and we can go down to the start throw function right here which just says next state throwing. So then when uh, our next tick will be this state right here. And uh, right here we're using the game manager to get our camera and then update the camera state to throwing. We play our little animation to raise our guy's arm. And then we have our player revolve with mouse. So in the same way that we got whatever we clicked on in the screen, we are doing that again here. Uh, creating a raycast and then shooting uh, that out wherever we are clicking with the mouse and then we're actually making our character uh, look at that position and uh, so that's pretty cool um, but we're just doing that continuously because we are in the process function here and that's why it revolves around uh, the mouse whenever we move so uh, and then once we finish what kicks us out of this um, state right there is our on animation finished so we have this we i spelled launch projectile incorrectly so if our animation finishes launch projectile our next state will be idle and then we also update our camera to be in the normal state again instead of the throw state so that is essentially how we've done everything uh we have states on our camera states on our player and then eventually you'd probably have states on your game manager and maybe you'd have to simplify all that later, but uh, I just found this a little fun thing to do. And um, yeah, if you like this type of content, uh, more to come. Also, I'm going to copy and paste the uh, scripts into the comments because it's only like four or five scripts or whatever. Uh, I'm trying to make these tutorials as useful as possible. Uh, I think Mizizi had some good points back in the day when he's like, uh, no one really gives a fuck who you are, just get to the tutorial and get through it as fast as possible so that I can get my information and go. Um, but I think I can take that one step further by putting all the relevant information in the comments. And then uh, I'm going to do this type of shit at the end, so if you want to stick around for some entertainment or whatever, take a look uh, at the end of the videos. 
But uh, yeah, more things to come on this channel. I'm doing a shitty mobile game, which I'm pretty hyped for. I'm just going to show that off a little bit. Uh, let's open that up. Uh, so this is what I have on there. Whatever the fucking thing's going to load. There we go. So if I run this scene right here. So we get a pretty good frame rate um, on my computer with an i9. I'm trying to make this for mobile. And when I run it on a, uh, on a mobile device, I get about 9 frames a second. Alright, so. It's meant to be one of those um, uh, shitty mobile games. But yeah, I have a kick. That will actually knock people backwards if they don't have enough health. Yeah, and then I got uh, this here, which will knock things up in the air. I got some mana over there in the top corner. So, yeah, we've got a lot of shit in here. We just need to flush it out a little bit more. And then I'll have a tutorial on this one. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for the channel. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Have a good one. Thank mm -hmm. you.